Welcome back to another video, everyone. Aaron and Nick here from UA Visuals, and today we're gonna to be talking about the L2 and the L1. We've had this for about a week now. We've taken it into the field with some real life scenarios. We've done vegetation encroachment, power lines, mapping, and we wanna share the results with you and to give you an idea of the differences. That's right, Aaron. We're gonna talk about the hardware the software, main upgrades of the L2, and the best use cases as well for this particular unit. And also, if you stick around to the end of the video, we're gonna show you a secret process that not many people are aware of, so hang around for that. So first off, let's talk about the hardware, Nick. What are we looking at here with the L2? First visually, you can see it's a much bigger sensor, yep. as well as the, the camera as well on it. What are we getting with this bigger unit, or with the sensor? Better data, more data. Sampling rate, what are we looking at? So 240 hertz on the L2 with five returns, as opposed to 240 hertz only on two returns on the L1. Okay. And then it drops down to 160 hertz. Tell us a bit about returns, what does that mean? Returns, like uh, I've seen, it's a bit like an echo. You go down a hallway and you yell, and the further it gets, the quieter it is. So the fourth and fifth return won't be as accurate as the first and second and third return. And so, this is um, important for LiDAR particularly because... It is important, especially for vegetation. Yeah. You want to penetrate as many as through gaps and leaves as possible yep. so that third, fourth and fifth return will hopefully do that. We're looking at the camera here. What kind of camera is it? So it's a 4 over 3 CMOS sensor, yep. 20 megapixel mechanical shutter. Nice. Which is a yeah, big improvement from the L1. Yep. So from a price point, point of view, I know prices keep moving all over the place, but from the start of January 2024, what are we looking at with price? So about 21K Australian dollars, 14 thousand US. Yep. And that was kind of around about the same amount that uh, the L1 kind of came Yeah, out. when it came out, it was about that so price. It, it kind of tells me that the L2 is going to be the replacement for this and they're going to be discontinuing this, I would imagine. I'd say they would, yeah. Yep. You can probably right. find a cheaper L2 if you're looking for, sorry, L1, if L1. you're <laughs> looking yeah. for an L1. Yeah, and then there's the thing, like with this video as well, you might find that you might just need the L1, it'll be a cheaper price point, you can use it on your larger drones as well, and it might just do the trick. All right, so with the L2 upgrades, what are we looking at? What are some really, really cool key features that this has come up with. A really good feature is the IMU calibration. So as people know with the L1, when you start it up, you've got to keep your drone in that same spot for five to 10 minutes for it to warm up and calibrate. That is not required with the L2. So how long would it take? It's, uh, it's instant, you plug it in, turn it on, and it's ready to go if you've got your mission yeah, ready. Yeah, so that, that's awesome, because the L1, we just had to, what was just waiting to wait around. and keep the drone steady still. Yep. Yeah. And even battery changes, right? If you're moving location, swapping batteries yep. out, and you have to wait again for another. Exactly, yeah. yeah. How many lasers or how many points are we looking at per scan versus you know so, between these two units? Yeah, per second with the L2, now it's 1.2 million. And it was 480,000 with the L1. It's a pretty big upgrade. Big upgrade, yeah. yeah. And benefits for that? Like, why Why do we want more points? Well, you can you can fly quicker. The yep. says now you can fly at 15 metres per second if you choose to. Yep. That means you are getting a lot more points in those seconds as opposed to the L1. If you need to get a job done quicker, be more efficient, you can yep. fly a lot quicker. Tell me about the accuracy now with the L2. So the L2 at, let's say, 150 metres, you can get, they're saying, 5 centimetre accuracy, whereas with the L1, it was 10 centimetres at 100 metres. So that's saying pretty, that, you can, yeah, yeah. you can fly higher, and flying higher, you're going to cover a much larger area. Yeah. So would you want to fly high, or is the best best kind of uh, scenario to fly a little as low as possible? Getting more points out there? Uh, the, look, the lower you fly, you're going to be flying a narrow sort of field, which means Band. you're capturing yeah. less. You need to do more passes of an area to get that yeah. if you're doing an area mapping. Like forestry, for example, covering a large area, you'd want to fly a bit higher? To kind yeah, of get de the... definitely, but not, I wouldn't fly at 120 metres. Yeah. I'll still keep it at 70 or 80 metres, which yeah. is you're getting some really good data. And yeah, with those five returns, hopefully penetrating through more dense yep. branches and trees and shrubs. Okay, so talking about the software, what do we need for the L2? You'll need DJI Terra to uh, process the data, and I'm sure you'll come with a license when you purchase one of these units. And yeah, through DJI Terra, you'll process, correct, and generate that LAS file that you need to export into the software. Now the software, you can only use DJI Terra at this stage, right? That's correct. I'm, yep. I'm pretty sure the, um, the output files that are to the SD card are incompatible with DJI Terra. So Terra's great, isn't it? We've used different software, different LiDAR units, but I've found this is like very quick compared it is. It's, to It's other... quick, it's easy to use. Mm. Um, now with the ground control points that can be added in, it's easy to set them up and correct it. Yep. Yeah, there is a cool new feature with smoothing your data as well, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. So you need yeah. to think about when you're doing that. You can go into more detail on that one yes. in another video. Yeah, DJI Terra is definitely easy to use 
especially with these, these units. You can also straight away get measurements, can't you? So as soon as you update, upload um, your data, you, like for vegetation, for example, if you want to see the distance from a power line to a house or to a tree or something, you can yep. mark. Point, your point to point measurements, mm -hmm. um, also volumetrics as well. You can select an area, it'll give you volume. Yep. That can be done within DJI Terra. You can't generate reports from that, but visually you can, you can see it. Yep. Yeah, so there's also a couple of new features as well with DJI Terra. You want to take through some of those? Yeah, so now with the export, um, when you're generating your, your map, you can do a DEM, so digital elevation map, uh, also contour maps as well, which is great if your client needs that. Yeah, yeah straight export and import to your software. All right, so what we did, we took the L1 into the field and we did a couple of passes. So the first pass we did with the L1, correct me if I'm wrong, it was at 80 meters. And we did one pass, so it was a linear run. So we'd kind of imagine that this was high voltage power lines and distribution network, and we just needed to get a huge scan of, let's say, kilometers and kilometers worth. So we did a test with one pass at 80 meters, so two returns, and then we did the same with the L2. Now the L2 had five returns. Five right? returns, 240 hertz, yep. still single line. Cool. We'll show you on the screen as we talk of the differences between them, but you can clearly see that there's far more points in the L2 versus the L1. But also not to mention the efficiency of the actual job, like when we were out there with the warming up the IMU, that took a while, getting it up in the air, flying, just the general operation, we found the L2 was a lot quicker. And um, we did fly at seven meters per second with the L2 and five meters per second with the L1. So that's the only right. difference. Yep. Um, even in saying that we were flying quicker with the L2, we still got better data. So then we, we did the L1 at 80 meters again, but we did three passes. So this is just, basically this is just collecting more data. So we went up, down the middle, and then up again. In, in saying that, it wasn't the same line. So we did a, I think for that corridor, it was about a 90% overlap to yep. get those those passes as close as possible, but not directly the same pass. Yeah, so it was, we've got here, we've got 90% aside, yep. 70% front. Now the front is RGB. It's always gonna be RGB, it doesn't matter about lighter. Lighter's gonna be the side overlap. The front is that um, RGB. So with, again, the L2, mechanical shatter, 0.7 second interval, you can fly quicker and do a 90% overlap. You're gonna be getting a lot more images. Yeah. Whereas with the L1, you're limited to flying slower for that reason, because you can't push that front overlap. As you can see the results with the L2, looking at the returns as well, you're, the L2 is showing you five different returns and you can see Obviously the red is the, the fifth return and it's got right at the bottom, you can see a little bit of it. The fourth return, third return, second and the first are pretty clear. And then you go into the L1, you've got those two returns. So you can see there's a big gap from one and two and there's missing data there. Way more points. There was an interesting thing that you mentioned before with the returns on this. Do you want to explain what happens instead of, if you set it to the five returns and you're getting two Yeah, so if you do set it to five returns and you're doing some power line inspections or anything and there's not much density, there's no trees or, or shrubs around, and it doesn't penetrate through anything, DJI Terra won't show you those returns, it won't process it, because you don't need it. It's, I think it's a pretty cool feature, because mm. your data will be yeah, smaller once you process. Yeah. All right, so that's kind of a bit of a, a general side-by-side -side comparison of the both. We obviously know that the L2 has got some significant improvements. So let's talk about applications, like where can we use LiDAR for those getting into the LiDAR game? What kind of applications? So most obvious, I guess, is in power and utilities. So we've been doing a bit of this with power companies. What do you get out of it? I guess the main thing, measurements, right? So doing huge easements trying to get um, measurements from span to span. You can even measure the sag of the conductor, the distance to trees. So it's yeah. a lot of measuring, isn't it? It is exactly, yeah. And I mean, a lot of that stuff you mentioned is done in third-party software. So you'll get really good data from the L2 and then put it into third-party software to get those sort of results. You can measure, like Aaron said mm -hmm. before, within Terra, but there are software that can automate those processes and get you better results for your clients. But yeah, definitely, I mean, our findings with the L2 for vegetation management and power lines, flying at 70 meters is giving us pretty solid lines, or almost solid lines, yep. conductors. All right, so applications, another industry, construction, do you want to talk a bit about yeah, construction? Yeah, construction, you can um, do a lot of terrain mapping, obviously, so if there's a construction site where they need to clear an area out, uh, instead of using photogrammetry, which will be a lot more data, you can quickly run it through with the LiDAR and do those same volumetrics, get know how much dirt to remove, plot pile measurements, mm -hmm. as, as I said. Well, there's mining, oil and gas, forestry is a big one now at the moment, determining the, the actual terrain under the, the canopy and all the bush and whatnot. So another interesting one most people don't know about is visual effects. So in the film and TV, video game, TV commercials, even theatre shows, you can use LiDAR. A lot of companies now are using LiDAR scans 
to create a base or a three D model or a digital twin of the landscape. Marvel movies, Star Wars, they all do it. And you create this kind of like digital landscape first and then they kind of build out the scenes around it. So if you're in the film and TV game, it's a big one. Okay, now before we tell you about our top secret drone inspection process using LiDAR, and this is something that not many people know about, before I tell you about that, we have a whole bunch of drone courses available for you guys to go check out at dronemasterclassacademy.com for those wanting to start their own business or just learn as much as they can about LiDAR, inspections, photography, videography, anything drone related, go check those out. I'll leave a discount code in the link in the description as well. Now, this process, this top secret process is very cool. We kind of just stumbled across it uh, maybe towards the end of last year, but let's just say you have multiple assets to inspect. You're, I'm talking like, let's say kilometers and kilometers of power lines. Not just power lines, let's say cross arms on a distribution network or even a series of buildings. And you needed to get your drone into a specific position around the pole to capture an image of these cross arms, let's say, and then move on to the next. Now, the process right now would be a manual operator going up and flying and getting real close, focusing, taking a shot, and then coming back down, changing batteries and whatnot. But what if I told you you could automate that process using a LiDAR scan and building a flight plan around a LiDAR scan. Now you can do this with DJI Terra at the moment, and it's called Detailed Inspection mission planning. So effectively, you're scanning in a whole area first with LiDAR, then you're taking that data into Terra, and then in Terra you're using another drone, a secondary drone like Matrice 30T or something along those lines, and you can literally position exactly where the drone, where you want the drone to be, zooming into the cross arm, seeing what the frame is, taking a photo, and then moving on to the next one. So you're kind of creating a virtual world of waypoints in a LiDAR data. And then when you're in the field, get your M30 out or your M350, hit play, and it will just capture yep. those exact spots. And we trialed this and it was amazing. So this is going to revolutionize the whole data capturing and asset capturing process and to speed that up very quickly. So and from a safety point as well, because you've got that LiDAR data of that area, mm. the drone, if you consider a waypoint where it's too close to an object or it shouldn't fly through there, Obviously, it's in point cloud, so it won't go. They will tell you that there's something in the way. Yes. So when you're planning your mission, you can see if it's going to be too close to an object, if there's a tree close by where you can't go further back. So yeah. it's, yeah, really smart. Um, yeah. However, it is DJI Terra Electricity that you have to get. Yep. For it. it is a different subscription. Same software, but it's kind of an extension of Terra. Yeah. Just chat about final thoughts. Now, if you're getting into LiDAR and you've got an M300, M350, this would probably be a great starting point, yeah? Definitely, look, there are much more expensive lighter units out there, mm. um, but from the results that we're getting with the, well, both L1 and L2, but specifically the L2 now with the upgrades, uh, it is an entry, great for entry level price-wise, uh, yep. but also you are gonna get some good results as well. Yep. You just gotta also think about just the price point, so it's not just the um, 20,000 or 13, 14,000 US dollar entry, but it's also the software component as well. And at the moment, Terra is about it's about four thousand Australian dollars. Don't correct me on that, but roughly five, about that. Yeah, per year, sorry. per year, per year. Yeah. So just think about that from a cost point of view. But then once again, you know, when you look at the ROI in terms of lidar jobs, you know, you could probably, depending on how lucky you get in the first hit, but you could probably get a really decent contract or a job that would probably replace the cost of the unit straight up. So. Yeah. Have a think about that, but LiDAR is becoming very, very popular today for a range of applications. So yeah, you are just not just purchasing the LiDAR unit, you need to think about your accuracy and your ground control points, your, whether you're using a surveyor to do it for you or you're doing it yourself. Um, the equipment you need to purchase for that or rent in that case, um, yeah, because it's an additional sort of um, cost and process to, to correct that data. That's right. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we've got more tutorials on Drone Masterclass Academy. Go check that out. See you guys in the next one.